Let's take a look now at some inequalities. An inequality is an expression where one side is bigger or smaller than the other. And as a result of that, our solutions to an inequality is not a specific value. We don't come out with x is equal to a particular number, but we have an answer that is a range of values. Okay, so if we just have a look at some examples. This inequality here reads x is smaller than or equal to and the reason we say that x is smaller than or equal to here is because the pointed end of the inequality sign is facing the x and the open end of the inequality sign is facing the 1. And the open end of the inequality sign will always face the bigger of the two numbers that you're talking about. The reason we say that it's smaller than or equal to 1 is because we have a little line underneath the inequality sign which indicates that it's smaller than or equal to. So in other words, x could be any number that is either less than 1 or in fact 1 itself. So if we wanted to represent that as an interval, we need, and remember interval notation, we need the smaller number on the left and the bigger number on the right. So x, the set of numbers x, is all of the numbers that are smaller than 1. So 1 will be the largest number in that set. And because x is allowed to also be equal to 1, we use a square bracket around the 1 to show that it was it's in less than or equal to that value. Now, x is any number that I can think of that is smaller than 1 on the left. And that means it goes all the way to negative infinity. Remember that the infinity sign is just an 8 that you write on its side. So that would be the set of numbers for x. If we look at the next one, x is greater than 3. There's no little line underneath here, so it's not equal to. It's simply just greater than 3. We know that it's greater than because the open mouth of the inequality is facing the x, so that means that the x is the larger quantity. And if we wanted to write that in interval notation, x is all the numbers that are larger than 3, so 3 will be the smallest number in my set. X doesn't ever equal 3, so we use a round bracket around the 3 to show that it's just bigger than. And then, because it's all the numbers bigger than 3, I can go all the way to infinity. And infinity will always get a round bracket because it's not a specific value. I can only use a square bracket if I'm talking about a specific value that I can physically reach. I can never reach infinity, so I always use a round bracket to indicate it in interval notation. Now, if we just look at the last one, negative x is greater than or equal to 2. Here, two different people might approach this question in two different ways. One person might say, okay, I am going to keep the inequality sign where it is and facing the same direction. I'm going to add x to both sides and I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. In other words, what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap the x and the 2 around. And we can do this because an inequality sign in that way behaves like an equal sign. So we will then land up with positive x on the right-hand side and negative 2 on the left-hand side. Somebody different might say, no, okay, I don't like that. I'm rather going to multiply. So I'm going to start off with my inequality and I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1. That will give me positive x and negative 2. But if you have a look here, this inequality is reading x is smaller than or equal to negative 2. And this inequality here is reading x is greater than or equal to. So we're getting a different answer. And in fact, the one that is incorrect is this one over here. And we need to remember that when we are wanting to multiply or divide by a negative number in an inequality, we must swap the inequality sign around. Otherwise, we're not going to get the right answer. Because as you could see there, if we left the inequality sign in, its, um, in the same direction, we got a completely different answer for x. But if we had chosen to do the multiplication method, so if we had negative x is greater than or equal to 2, and we had chosen to multiply both sides by negative 1, it would have been fine, provided we had switched the inequality sign around in order to keep the answer the same. So my suggestion to you is, don't try to remember to do this. Rather, just move the x to where it's going to be positive in the inequality, and you can never go wrong with the inequality sign. Okay, let's take a look at some examples. 
Look at the graph below for what values of x is number 1 y greater than 0 and number 2 y less than or equal to 0. So saying that a number is greater than 0 is another way of saying that y is positive and saying that a number is less than 0 is another way of saying that the number is negative. So if we just look at the graph the y values are plotted on the vertical axis and the x values are plotted on the horizontal axis. If we wanted to know where our y values were positive, the x-axis is actually the dividing line between where y is positive and y is negative. Everything above the x-axis, your y values are positive, they're bigger than zero. Everything below the x-axis, your y values are less than zero. And if we just have a look at it from the graph's point of view, here, from this value all the way up and around here, I have got positive y values on that section of the graph. On this part of the graph from here down and from here down, those part of the graphs lie below the x-axis, so their y values are all negative. And the place where that changes, where it goes from being positive to negative, is here at the x-intercepts. So in when we're referring to an inequality, we actually call the x-intercepts the critical values. They are critical because they are the point at which the graph is going to change from being positive to being negative. So if we now want to write our solution sets, remember that we are asked for which values of x is the y values positive. So here, we the y values are positive for this section of the graph over here. What are the x values like for that section of the graph? Well, they are between negative 3 and positive 1. So the x values for the graph there are all the ones that are larger than negative 3. They lie to the right of negative 3, but they are smaller than 1. They lie to the left of 1. So that would be the solution set for that inequality. Number 2, the values where of x for which y is less than or equal to 0. So here we've got two different places where that's happening. It's happening here to the left, oh, it's a different color there, to the left of negative 3, and again to the right of positive 1. You can see that all of these x values are to the right of positive 1, and all of these x values are to the left of negative 3. <clears throat> so there's actually two different places where this is going to happen. It's going to happen where x is smaller than or equal to negative 3. The reason I'm using the less than or equal to sign here is because I want to know whether y is less than or equal to. So I'm actually including the values of the x-intercepts because that's where y would be equal to 0. And it would happen there where x is less than or equal to negative 3. Or it would happen again where x is greater than or equal to 1. Okay. In your homework book, there is an example for you to try. So please pause the video and try on your own. Okay, the graph of y is equal to x squared minus 4x is shown. For which values of x is y greater than or equal to 0 and b y less than 0. So again, here is our x-axis. That is the dividing point between the positive y values and the negative y values. So y is positive over there and y is negative over here. If we just look at the graph, the y values are positive to the left of 0 and again to the right of positive 4 and the y values are negative in between 0 and 4. Okay, so if we just write those as our solution, so where is y greater than or equal to 0? Well, it's where x is less than or equal to 0 because it's all of the values to the left of 0 and then all the values to the right of positive 4, so all x would be equal greater than or equal to positive 4. <clears throat> Where are the y values less than 0? For which values of x? Well, it's for the values of x between 0 and 4. So x would be to the bigger than 0, so it would be to the right of 0, or x would be less than 4. <clears throat>